Hey guys, welcome back, this is Thorm and welcome to episode 180 of our single player Tiverton World. So we're starting the episode off here beneath our blacksmith building and this is an area that I frequent quite a lot. I do a lot of my smelting here and I store a lot of my valuable items. So that's all well and good and it's nice, easy access for me. But it's not that secure, so anyone can just wander on through this portal and take what they want really. So I think it's about time we change that, particularly if we're going to store ancient debris somewhere around here. Originally I was just going to store it probably inside this chest, but we need something more secure. This ancient debris is just far too valuable. Now you can see I've added in some decorations here. I've got some cauldrons and hoppers down to the floor. I've just added some detail over here. And I've also sealed off this back wall. Now there is a hopper down the end here. Now you can throw in different items and it won't do anything. So let's take those out. But if you were to put in a diamond, aha, you can see this door opened. So let's go on through. This is going to be a way to have a secret room in here. And I'm going to seal off this passageway and then try and make a vault right over here somewhere. So we've got all this ancient debris that I've also collected. You can see I've been stockpiling it, literally. <laughs> and then I think if we were to move all this down into a vault, and secure that, that could be a pretty cool way to have something valuable in our world and nice, have it nice and secure, but also visualize it rather than just having it sitting in chests. So to get things going, I've built a walkway down and a frame. This is where I'm going to install a secure three by three door. And then I'm going to have some extra security measures out the back here. And then because we are so close to the surface, I'll probably have to keep digging down and have this slanting down for the main vault. But that's alright, I don't mind having a bit of a, an adventure to go down into the vault. Now I am going to base this design off a vault tutorial that I've built and uh, have on my channel actually in video form. I'll link it in the video description. Alright, so let's head on into that creative world and check out the vault design and then we'll go through the security measures and replicate the redstone into this world. So this is the vault design and it still works in the latest versions of Minecraft which is pretty cool. There's nothing too fancy with the redstone. I'll just show you a little glimpse there. <laughs> so um, we do have the tutorial, so you can go and check that out if you want to know how to build this. Now the basic concepts of this is we've got a secure door, which you can open up using a button here. And then we've got some warning lights here, um, just with some flashing redstone lamps with note blocks for the sound effects. You can see we've got some flowing lava. And we've also got two items in item frames out the back. And these are combination locks to be able to open up this iron door. So that's a reasonably uh, effective, <laughs> I think, a vault design for how you can access that back room. Now, there is a bit of a flaw though, and I did iterate this design a little bit. So when you do open this up, something that I did overlook is you could stand here and see how you can try and enter in the latest and greatest combination to try and access that door, and you're still quite safe away from that lava. So that is a design that I think I kind of overlooked when I first came up with this. So that resulted in version two of the design and that's what we have over here. Now I did make a few other small modifications to just make it a little bit more updated. But you can see we don't have a button now to be able to access this vault. So we now have a target block and I've currently got it configured so you can shoot an arrow anywhere inside, uh, basically from this corner all the way down to the center, all the way around and that will open this door. So we could hide this target block away if we wanted to. You see the warning lights are a little bit more rapid, a little bit more annoying, and that should warn any nearby players. You can see we've still got the lava that comes down and will block this access. We've still got the item frames for the combination locks to open this door. But a key difference is when you now try and enter in a code into these combinations, you notice this gate will automatically close straight away. So let's try this out. Ah, just like that. <laughs> so it's pretty hard to stand out the front here and be able to guess the code. And if you keep doing that, you know the alarm will keep going. Now I know the code, so let's try and jump in before we get killed by the lava. Okay, we can access this gate. It's all open, or the door rather, and we've avoided the lava there. So that's all cool. Now the combination is still open. So obviously this door is still kept uh, open here. But because this main gate has closed out the front, this glass three by three, it means no one can really walk on in. So even though this door is open right now, it's still secure for me. So I could have a vault back here and do whatever I want. And I can also leave. Now when I go to leave, what's going to be different is the gate will open. You can see there's no alarm. We've got time to reset 
the combination. This door is closed. We can leave the room and then we'll see this gate will automatically close. Now if you wanted to be particularly evil to the player and make them get a bullseye to be able to open this gate, um, you can use some redstone like this. So basically replicate this part of the redstone right where we have this block and the redstone beneath it. So here we've got a comparator connected to the target block and we have it in subtraction mode and that's when the light is on the comparator. And then we've just got a, a redstone source from here with two, uh, two wire blocks and this is being powered. So this is subtracting this strength with this strength. And now when we shoot this target block, if we go on the outside, you can see nothing happens with this redstone lamp. It's only if we get a bullseye that this lamp will activate. And that is how we can uh, control when we get a, a bullseye and then we can hook that up to this circuit right here. So that is something you could do if you wanted to, but for me, I'm probably not gonna be that accurate. <laughs> I will just shoot anywhere I want and then be able to open up the gate. Well, it may not look like much, but this is the beginnings of the redstone for this contraption. Uh, a key difference I've had to deal with is moving a bulk of the redstone or the components of the redstone from this side of the build to this side. And that's just because we didn't have enough room over here. I just thought it was too tight. And to make my life a bit easier, I'm going with two types of blocks as I build this out. So I've got the sandstone and the orange uh, terracotta here. And that's just so it makes it easier for me to map out where things go. So really I'm just putting down all the support structures for the redstone right now. I haven't got really any redstone here. I think I've got maybe one observer or something put there. But everything else is pretty much just all raw forms at the moment. But yeah, here you go. This is behind the scenes. This is what it currently looks like. We'll make it fit. And back around here somewhere is probably where we'll dig down and have like a basement area to the vault. Now I've installed iron bars to protect this room. We may switch it out to glass in the future, but for now I like the iron bars look. Everything else is pretty much as it was that you saw before, just now with the redstone installed. So let's give this a go. Let's shoot this target block. We're using gravel to push up the gate and you can come on down into the room and then enter the code and off we go. So that all seems to be working okay. Now I have put in a code and at the moment it is a very simple code. There we go, and then we can come on through. And I haven't put lava in here yet, but everything's all hooked up, ready to go. And then this is where we'll dig down and build the main storage area of the vault. So that all works quite well. Now you might notice I have moved the position of these item frames from these blocks down into these middle sections. And the reason why I did that, in fact, let's get out of here. Open up the door and let's reset this. There we go. So when you're standing outside, I didn't want it so that you could easily see the combination. So if I did have this vault open and I was on the outside here, anyone that would walk up could see the combination to the vault. And that's something we don't want. Now, I'm in a single player world, that's not a problem here. But if anyone wanted to create a design like this in a multiplayer server, then I thought, you know what, <laughs> you might want to protect your combination actually to be able to get in here. Now you still can see the item in the item frame. So my sneaky idea to try and camouflage that is to put in a flower pot in here and then cover it up with a sapling. Now it's not perfect, but it might be a big enough deterrent where a player may not easily be able to see the combination, particularly if it's open. So let's put this, uh, what was this one? I think this one has to go down the way and this one's like that. There we go. So that's now all open and let's got the last rocket here. So let's fly on up this way and don't kill myself hopefully. All right, so if this was a player that would come along, oh, someone's in the vault. Can they see the combination? I think you would struggle <laughs> to read what that combination is. So that is good enough for me. Certainly for a single player world, I think that's concealed enough, but uh, yeah, if you're in a multiplayer world, who knows, maybe you want extra defenses, maybe extra dispensers and you can shoot down lingering potions or something. There's plenty of room up there for all of that. But for me, I think this works out quite well. Now to complete this room, we're just gonna keep putting in some random blocks here and make it blend all okay and hopefully keep the same uh, block scheme that we have over here. So it looks like a continuous flow of style into this room. We'll remove a lot of the light sources perhaps and make it look a little bit more eerie. That's the intention. And we better cover up a lot of the redstone and all the supports, so that's a bit of a challenge. Um, but that should look good. Now we do have this target block and I have thought about how to make it a little bit more hidden 
because it is a nice white block with some red stripes on it. So what I'm going to do is put uh, vines in front of it and then let it grow down on the sides. This will grow down as well. Maybe that will help to hide that block. You can still activate the target block by shooting an arrow into it. It will go through the vines. So that all works, all okay. Have to take out that security guard there. But uh, yeah, that should uh, be all right. I'm happy with the overall look here. It might look a little bit small. That's all right. Don't mind it being intimate as you come on into this secret vault room. And then I'll also remove the lock on this door. I've just got a lever down here keeping it open right now. And that's why we can just walk in and out. But this will be all hidden away, nicely concealed, and then we'll work on the actual vault itself. So I'll spend a few hours working on this entranceway to the vault, and I think it's all done. So let's go check it out. I hope you guys will enjoy this. We throw in the diamond, and also did increase the duration to keep the door open. The player comes on through. And here we go. No path that went straight through here anymore. <laughs> you can see we've kind of uh, connected up the stairs that we had here to the main entrance. So it looks like it's naturally pushing the player down this direction just by the shape of the terrain on the, on the ground here. I think that looks quite good. Where we had the initial staircase here, I've just put in a nice little pond. <laughs> and we've got soul sand down the bottom there so your player can't swim down. But you can come up the other way, so that could be interesting in the future maybe but uh, yeah this looks good uh, no mobs can spawn up here I made sure that all the light levels are all okay but mobs can spawn behind the gates so that adds a little bit more danger if you wanted to enter the vault and we've got vines growing in here I made sure we didn't put vines too close to the entrance because don't forget we do have lava that comes out of that dispenser in there now you might be wondering how do you enter this room we did have a target block over here somewhere now can you see it Hopefully we camouflaged it quite well. You might have guessed it's in that little hole <laughs> and you can still snipe it, but you've got to be a little, you see actually a little bit of red just there. I'm not sure if it'll come out in the video, but there is a target block in there. So there we go, we shot it. Let's come on in, get the combination before we get lavered. Uh oh. That was very close. <laughs> Maybe too close. Uh, a good thing about this design as well with a door like this is that the lava will get stopped by the door. So if you just manage to get through, even if you're on fire, you're pretty well safe. You won't keep burning. So I've spent some time gathering blocks in preparation for building this vault storage area. And I'm going to go for maybe a very bright white quartz looking exterior for the room. So the walls will be made out of quartz. And the main reason for that is this is pretty much the surface above this block. So we don't have a lot of height here to work with. And going with a nice bright uh, wall design will try and make the room look bigger than what it is. That's my current thinking anyway. <laughs> so we'll try that out. Now I am going to incorporate some different blocks against the quartz. So one I wanted to try is using bone. So that's like a cream version of maybe to offset the, the whiteness of the quartz. And then I'm going to try and use maybe some nether bricks or even the red nether bricks against the uh, quartz. That could be an interesting look. And then maybe we'll incorporate some prismarine because I just like the look of the prismarine, particularly the bricks against the quartz block. I just like the contrast. Well, we're far from done, but this is a look into this vault storage room. This is the main uh, first level, I guess, and then we'll have a staircase that comes down. And this is it. We can't go any higher than this. <laughs> I've tried to squeeze in as much as I can to make it look nice and large in here. Uh, either side of these walls, we have the redstone for the combination lock, so I can't really go any further this way. Along here is where we place the... No, actually on this one. Yeah, the redstone torch has gone on that side, but on the other side they go... There, I think, from memory. Yeah, so we can't have the wall any further across. So there is that limitation. Now let's see if we can get out of here. There we go. All right, <laughs> so now that we know the width, it's just determining the height. And as you can see, we're at max height. So let's go, whoa, 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 whoa. That was a terrible flight effort just there. Let's try that again. All right. So what we have is a surface problem <laughs> and a zombie problem looks like. This is it. We can't go any higher than this underneath here because we're hitting the surface and as we keep going this way we're going to have more problems. We've got gravel roads so that needs to rest onto something. Get out of here Mr. Zombie. So we are constrained certainly vertically. Uh, 
horizontally we can go a little bit further. I don't think we'll go any further at this height level. We'll go downwards. I think that's the easiest way to give us some more space. So we'll have definitely that staircase. And then I'm not sure what we're going to do for the ceiling over there. Maybe we'll just put in some slabs rather than a block. Certainly won't have these two rooms being the same. But I do like the different look here of the red uh, nether brick against the quartz blocks. And we've got the bone uh, blocks in the walls. Nice and bright. Nice different uh, little contrast there with the white. So that is going to be workable. All right. So I'm going to continue with this. I do want to grab myself. Uh, where is it? My box of fun for wood supplies. I want to see if I've got any trapdoors here. I do not. I'm looking for some birch trapdoors. All right. Got some birch. Let's get rid of these seeds. Because something I do need to do is try and hide those light sources of the sea lanterns. So let's grab this and let's go here. Perfect. All right. I thought this color could be interesting because it's just another variant of not white, but you know, beige or the off white kind of look. I wanted to see if this would blend in okay. Yeah, I don't think that looks too bad. I could put in iron trapdoors maybe and put some redstone beneath it. But I think that's okay. Hmm. Yeah, we can make that work. Now, I can't remove... Can I remove this layer of dirt? I don't think I can. This one is the surface. I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> That's all right. We can go like that. So that means I can run it along here. All right. Uh, now, what can I do with this part of the room? This is the difficult part. Let's go with our block of quartz. If I were to run that along there. It looks too low, doesn't it? Definitely looks too low. All right. Let's scrap that idea. Let's try a slab. Because I need something at the height level here to basically put in a ceiling. Man, it's not too bad. And then for the walls, I intentionally made it an odd number. So I was thinking we could put in some stairs here. And you know me, I'll put some flower pots on top of these. That could be an interesting look. Got a pretty crazy inventory right now, but that's all right. Let's go offload some of this stuff. Just throw it into a chest for now. Which one's got some space? This one does. Let's get rid of these. And what was I going to look for? I was going to look for my box of interior design. So I wanted to explain a couple of these thought processes. Give me our space constrained here. Oh, that's right. I was also going to try and incorporate some of these. Now, where should we put some soul lanterns maybe in the middle how far should we hang it down maybe there it's not to give off light it's just to add something to the wall there so it doesn't look as plain doesn't look too bad now for this back room uh, okay that's going down lower so maybe we I mean, we could just make it look a bit smaller. Just won't hang down as far. I need to eat something so I can sprint, but there we go. Yeah, all right. I might change that back room. We don't have to make this back one look the same as this first room. Yeah, so getting rid of this is probably going to be a better look. Now, I should have some flower pots in here. And let's 
grab our flowers. Now I am thinking of going saplings though, because these are nice and green. I think the green with the white is a good look. Might go with something different at the back of the room though. Maybe some cornflower. A bit of blue. Doesn't look too bad. Haven't figured out the flooring just yet. I don't want to go with any of these blocks. Let's go with something different. We could go with some andesite or... Uh, polished granite might be a better look. Where's my polished andesite? Let's try both these out. Just to have something different here. If I can access the... there we go. I mean... It's a pretty safe choice. What do we think? Do you like that? Or let's try it on this other side with the granite. Which one do you guys like better? I'm going to think about this and then just pick one. So I've decided to go with the polished granite look. It just adds a bit more color to the room. And I just moved my <laughs> shulker boxes up here just so they're out of the way. And I actually thought it looked good. It almost looked like a spot where you could have a crate of storage. And that's exactly what we're doing here. We're putting down some acacia trapdoors and close that. I mean, I won't have shulker boxes in here forever. I'll probably put emeralds or something in there. I'm not sure, but <laughs> that could be a pretty cool storage look. Now, I do want to change the look here for the stairs, and I'm going to go bold. I'm going to go nice and white. Let's hope we don't hit any redstone down here. Uh, now, how far in can we go? That can get replaced. Grab all these blocks. We'll try a smooth quartz. I might regret that, but let's see. When should the stairs start to go down? I'll have to come over and clear this block. So I should be able to put stairs on top of this. And then the stairs will go down. Well, that's gonna be very bright. <laughs> uh, bright can be okay. So I think the quartz staircase is a nice look to go down here. We need to contrast the white uh, design here with something darker on the walls though. And I couldn't help but think about a block that we haven't used yet in a build. And that is blackstone. I don't think I've used blackstone anyway. If I have, I don't remember where I've used it. Now, here's the strange thing. Because what if I wanted to use this a lot down here? And when I mean a lot, like do the entire walls made out of these blocks. Now that could be an interesting look. And I do want to use these kind of blocks as well. But that's it. I think that's all that I have. I don't think I've got any other materials. Whoa. Um, <laughs> where is my bow? Oh, my bow's up in there. This guy's totally going to kill me. I know what I can do with you. I can make you someone else's problem. Go into the nether. <laughs> That'll be a surprise for another time. What I did think we could do is go over to that uh, bastion remnant that we have found and already explored. And maybe we go tear it down. Grab some materials that way.
Well, I think my pick has had enough. You can see the durability is almost down to nothing. We've hardly made a dent into this Bastion uh, Remnant here. But uh, that's all right. There's plenty to come back and collect later. We've got lots of goodies in here. I've also had an overflow into this chest. <laughs> so we're getting a lot of these um, blocks pretty quickly. Although we haven't got many of these ones here, these uh, Gilded Blackstones. So I think as we get down further, well, that's pretty crazy. There's a full on battle going on on up here. <laughs> There's, um, yeah, I think as we get down to the layers, uh, we'll get more of those and we should be able to find some gold blocks scattered amongst uh, the structure as well. So we should be able to find that as we continue to mine. But I've got these resources now. We'll take these back to the overworld and we'll uh, continue working on our vault design. So right next to this Bastion Remnant, we do have one of these Crimson Forests, which I haven't explored really, so I'm pretty keen to grab some materials while we're here. I might be able to incorporate some of these into the vault design, or just in general building materials. So let's uh, cut down a couple of trees maybe. Alright, so here we go. We've got the blackstone going in. Just trying a few different looks here. Just mixing in different blocks. No real pattern to this madness. <laughs> Let's just try different things and see what looks good. We do need to add some lighting down here at some point. So I thought around here could be a good spot for that. So let's make a section here for that. Uh, how wide should we want to make this? Um, is that wide enough? Maybe. Although I don't like having that block there because that one's at the same height level. We'll continue to mix in the different blocks. So that could be like a feature section of the wall and then we'll do the same over here. Then I think if we're going to add lighting into this section of the wall, we should make it nice and bright. So we'll go with the quartz again. I'm going with the smooth quartz here. Let's see what this looks like down in this little hole. Uh, definitely not bright enough. <laughs> All right, so what can we do to add in some real light down there? We should probably maybe go with some sea lanterns. Let's grab some of these, try these. Where would we need to put these? I'll probably have to hide them into the walls maybe. So if we had them like that, now I need to camouflage them, so how can we do that? Uh, let's try and use these maybe. Oh, how do you make a trapdoor with these? Oh, you do do it like that. Don't know why I didn't have the recipe. <laughs> Minecraft always trying to keep me on my toes. Uh, let's craft a few more. And then we can add these down on the sides, maybe. How does that color look? Oh, yeah. I thought it might look good against the black. Um, that looks still strange. Look any better? Don't like how the smoke sits there. Maybe that's going to work okay. Let's get rid of that block. Yeah, it looks like the smoke's going up. I actually think that looks pretty good. Yeah, let's do the same over here. And then to finish it off, we're going to put some flower pots down the bottom with some warped fungus in them. I do like the way the warped fungus looks with the campfire, or the soul campfire. And then, yeah, you can see a bit of the reds going with the magenta, with the black. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> I think that looks pretty cool as a color scheme and a block scheme. So I don't know how well this is going to go on a larger scale for a room back here for storing all the valuables, but on this smaller scale, it looks pretty cool. So I'm going to complete most of the basement for this vault in the next episode, but uh, I couldn't help but put down at least a few diamond blocks here and make it look <laughs> like we've got some decent storage in the vault. So let's check it out. Oh yeah, that looks pretty cool. <laughs> all right, so in the next episode, we will dig this out a little bit further. I'm not sure how much space we have to work with down here. I'll figure that out in between episodes and then we'll do the big reveal in the next one. All right, stay awesome, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the episode and let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'll see you guys again very soon in the next one. Cheers.